Welcome to PMC Studio, the interview show for Portland Media Center Studio Workshop. I'm Lance Forrest, your host for this episode. Each episode is an interview with someone doing interesting things in the greater Portland community while people who want to learn how to use our studio and its equipment get experience taping the show. In this episode, I'm interviewing Jackie Devineau, member of the Portland Green Party and local activist. She's here to tell us about the Green Party and about an exciting event the Green Party is hosting right here at the PMC in May. Jackie, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So Jackie, can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and kind of what brought you into activism and how long you've been an activist locally? Yes, I started activism work in junior college, which was 68 to 70 for me. Um, we were part of the, the march into Boston Commons uh, during the Vietnam War to bring the troops home. Mm. Um, that's where I got my first taste of it. Um, I actually did not become a full-on activist, though, until the early um, 2000s, when I first got involved with the Green Party mm -hmm. uh, down in Florida. Mm -hmm. So can you expand on that and tell us a little bit about the Green Party? Yes. So the Green Party was actually, the first meeting was held here in Augusta, Maine in 1982 by a fellow named John Rensenbrink, who unfortunately passed last year. Um, and we have been one of the more active state parties. Mm -hmm. um, we have run many uh, people for governor. Uh, we did, however, at one point, uh, the rule used to be that we had to get a certain percentage from running a governor race mm -hmm. in order to keep ballot access. And we did lose ballot access. Uh, and when we got it the, the following year, they would not let us take our name back. So we went from being the main Green Party to the main Green Independent Party. Mm. And that's kind of made a confusion for some people registering because the registration card will say Democrat, Republican, and Maine Green Independent. And people who are independent are really unenrolled. There is no such thing as an independent party. Mm. And uh, so that was a bit of confusion. Sure, sure. Thank you for expanding on that because that is something that has confused me in the past is what the difference is between the Green Party and the Independent Party and I feel like a lot of folks might use the terms interchangeably just thinking that they're kind of the third option outside of Republican or Democrat. Well, that, you know, this is the thing. Um, the Green Party is actually the third option um, because we are the only party that doesn't take corporate money. Mm. So we're able to stand for the rights of uh, gay marriage, single payer health care, um, ending wars. We started, the Green New Deal was started with the Green Party. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that has been co opted by the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And the difference between theirs and ours is that ours was ending the wars and bringing the money home to take care of the people here. Mm -hmm. um, the wars for profit, this is not in defense of our safety. The wars that we're in right now are making it less safe for us and certainly for the people whose lives have been destroyed for years and years. So it's very important that people learn about the Green Party, especially mm -hmm. right now when so many people are having a problem 
with what they are seeing that both the Democrat and the Republican Party are putting forward for this next election. Yeah, I mean, I feel like what I see, you know, especially when you have somebody like a, a presumptive Republican nominee, it's kind of like, oh, well, the obvious choice, if I don't want that, is to go with the Democratic nominee. And it's kind of choosing the lesser of two evils. And I have to say to that, that if you talk to the people in Gaza who are living without water, electricity, food, their hospitals have been bombed, mm. that that's not a lesser evil. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have morally in the United States been brought down to believe that that or any war is a lesser evil. You know, when, we, when you bomb an area for 20 years, that child that grew up there for 20 years isn't going to be, oh, I love America. Mm -hmm. This is where a lot of the uh, groups, such as Hamas, mm -hmm. have been started around what has gone on. So, but the important thing is that people learn that they can vote their conscience and for who they want to vote for. No party owns your vo vote. Mm -hmm. And there's always been more people not registered into the Democrat or the Republican Party that could have at any time voted in an independent or a third party. Mm. And, but what happens is you go year after year mm -hmm. voting a lesser evil mm -hmm. for fear of supposedly a greater evil and this is where we end up at. You have a person who spews hate and a person who is paying with our tax money for a genocide. Mm. And those are our choices. Mm -hmm. So this isn't, and I, I do want to say, I want to stress one other thing, is that this is not about parties. We say that we are here for people, peace, and planet. We have a generation, we have children, we have grandchildren. They deserve the same life. They deserve to know the animals that we grew up with. We can't allow for this to go on. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that people learn that there is a third choice, and especially here in Maine, because we have ranked choice voting. Mm -hmm. We're the only state that has it for president which means that everybody in the state of Maine could actually rank the Green Party first. And if they still had their fears, rank that person second. Mm -hmm. It is, it, it, but, but until we start changing the way that we are doing this, it's not going to get better. Mm -hmm. And as I've told many times, a corporate party cannot put a, pres a progressive as their candidate. Mm -hmm. It's why Bernie, and that upsets me a lot, mm -hmm. if I knew that, he had to have known that. Mm -hmm. Knew that the party would never make him. They would do whatever they had to do. And we've seen it over and over. We've seen it with Dennis Kusin. Kucinich and others, mm -hmm. uh, and Dean, what they do. So I, I'm not here to knock the Democratic Party. I'm here to give people the word about the Green Party mm -hmm. and that no, they don't have to be a spoiler, especially here in Maine, because there's always more people that have stopped voting altogether. Mm -hmm. that can come out for a third party or an independent person. Mm -hmm. But people have just been led down the rabbit hole for so long. Right. Can you, can you kind of elaborate on that? And, and you had you phrased it, but I just really want to make sure that the viewers can really understand what you're saying here. So there have been enough people who have not voted in either party that the sum of those people, had they voted, could have elected in 
a Green yes. Party candidate? Yes, because, and the other, the other thing here too is that people need to know that no, we didn't take away from the Democratic candidate because mm -hmm. people like myself, we don't vote in the presidential race for a Democratic candidate because we don't believe in killing people around the world for profit. We don't, we believe in the things that are going to save our planet and for the generations to come. Mm. So we don't take from them because we wouldn't vote for them in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, in the last race that had uh, Hillary and uh, Trump and Jill Stein, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. The popular vote is the only thing that the Green Party can affect. Trump won through the Electoral College. Mm. And the Electoral College is something that really needs to be looked at, gotten rid of. Mm -hmm. The popular vote is now coming on. And of course, ranked choice voting, which we have here, mm -hmm. which would allow people to vote. and. Everybody in Maine could, it, this would be wonderful to happen. Everybody in Maine could vote Jill first, and if they had to, vote for somebody else second. And if Jill didn't win, then that second vote would go to the person that they wanted to, but it would give sure. them a chance to vote. The fact that people don't get to vote for their conscience is also another thing. Yeah. But I go beyond, this is not about parties. We've got to stop doing things about party, just like the genocide is not really about Palestine and Israel as far as the people standing up against it. It is about humanity. Mm. This is the thing that's been missing in our politics for a long while. And our candidate, Jill Stein, she's not a politician. She's a humanitarian. Mm. When she ran in 2016, she's the only one that went to Standing Rock. She went to COP, and the infamous trip that she took with a peace organization to Russia, where they took a picture of her sitting at the same table, where Putin came in for 10 minutes, sat at the table, talked Russian, and didn't even talk to her. And then three years afterwards, she was being investigated by the CIA. Mm. There's a lot of things that people don't know. When she ran in 2012, they went to one of the debates, she and her vice presidential candidate, and they actually took her and her vice presidential candidate to an undisclosed place and tied them to chairs. This sounds like a very, it, this is, but this is the truth that really mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. until there was enough time for the debate to be over and the people to have left and then dropped them off in the middle of nowhere. Mm. This. These are things that people don't know because everything's been kept right. of, of a secret. So it's, it's really, and that's, that's why this event that we're putting on here, um, that's going to be the 4th of May from three to five, Jill Stein's going to do a town hall meeting here. Mm. And it'll give people to a chance to come and speak to her and hear what she has to say, because she can say it a lot better than what I'm expressing, because she's lived it. This is the third time she's run, and mm. she runs. This woman has given her life to this, and she goes into these interviews and such. You know, they want to tear her down, they want to, and she's just right over it, because she's, she's the, the might of right is what she is. The might of right. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. So that leads me to another point. You had mentioned Gaza a little bit earlier when we were talking. Can you talk a little bit more about that and what's going on right now, especially with the universities? Yes, I'm glad you brought that up because right now, um, one of the, the biggest problems that we have as a party, as a third party, is getting on all the ballots, to have Jill on all the ballots. Mm. And the state that has the hardest is New York City, New York, because the governor of New York made a rule 
that we have to get 90,000 signatures in five weeks to get onto the ballot. And the only way you can really do that is if you are going to pay a whole bunch of people to be out in the streets. Mm -hmm. So not only does it mean that we have to come up with monies that we don't take corporate money, but this is, this is a big major thing. So Jill right now actually is going to be in New York herself. Mm -hmm. She's going to be down there. Um, and she plans to go um, to the colleges down there um, where they are now, uh, they've set up a huge uh, camp ground of Palestinian supporters, um, the campus there. Um, so she will be going down and, and talking to the students that are in that area. Um, it is a, it's spreading throughout the United States. I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, it, I, I, I can't, I can't go there with this too much because it's, it's, it's such a no brainer that there isn't a human being alive that should be taking our tax dollars and using it to do what's being done in the name of humanity. And it's not hum human to these people. I don't care what group they are, no group of people deserve to have their electricity, water, food, their hospitals bombed. It, it, it's, it's just total insanity that we even have to question and, and that the United States is the one factor that's, if we stopped giving money for the, and the bombs and the weapons, we're the biggest supplier of all of that. Mm. And we're also in the UN the ones that vetoed and talked against ceasefire. So, yeah, it's, it, it, is a, it is a major issue. It's one that Jill has been really championing. She's been traveling around the United States, talking to Muslim groups all around the United States and, and showing the support since neither of the other two candidates, um, and even RFK, is not supporting. Uh, is, it, it, RFK is, is supporting the genocide, mm. um, so. Mm. So can you talk a little bit more about the event that's gonna be going on in May? Yes. Here in Portland? Yes. So Jill is coming to Maine. Um, she has a very, very busy schedule. The way that we got her up here was that we have our um, Maine Green Convention on May 5th. So she's coming up the day before, and we'll be coming here to the studio from three to five mm. and doing a town hall meeting where everybody is invited to come and you can ask her questions and you can get the answers to all of this, which she can express a lot better than I can. <laughs> she's been doing it a lot longer. She's, Jill is a doctor and she says she gave up being a doctor of medicine and now as a doctor of poli politics. Mm -hmm. um, she says the, the most uh, deadly of all of the, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the diseases. Probably um, true. Yeah. yeah, so she'll be here. Um, they'll be doing this event. She's also doing a fundraising house party that night. And then she will be coming the next day um, where the Main Greens are doing their convention for the first time since COVID mm. in person. And we do it at the Vile Arboretum up in Augusta. Okay. It's, I don't know if you've ever been there, but I it's, it's a beautiful place. It sits in an orchard. There's all sorts of trails and it's just very relaxing and, and uh, just a very, the Green Party itself was founded uh, as an environmental movement and it only became a political movement to try to make sure that the laws around the environment were safe, which as you can tell, here in the United States, we haven't had too much luck with that, but mm -hmm. um, in other countries they have. Um, so we're in over 100 countries right now around mm. the world. 
I'm on the steering committee of the Global Green Women's, uh, and I work with amazing women from all around the world. Um, that's the other thing about the Green Party, where we have people all around the world who are trying to do the same thing as we are mm -hmm. uh, for people, peace, and planet. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. Really, really wonderful. So if people wanted to learn more about the Green Party and, and how to get involved, how do they do that? Well, they can Google Maine Green Independent Party, but I think also it's very important that they Google GP, um, gp.org, mm -hmm. which will take them to the national website mm -hmm. and go to our platform mm -hmm. because I think you will find, and it's one of the reasons when I, that's how I got involved with the party to begin with, mm -hmm. I think you will find that where for many, many years different progressive Democratic candidates have been trying to push for certain things that haven't been allowed. For instance, I think I may have started to, to did I, the um, green, oh, what's the word, Green New Deal. Oh, you did mention that. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And the, so the Green New Deal originated in the Green Party mm -hmm. and it was being, it, the main thing is, is that we have to end the wars for profit and bring the money home. Um, and it's not only because we need the money at home for th what's going on here, mm. but it's also you cannot cure climate as long as there are wars and bombs and all of the fuel that is used in all of the military weapons. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, it's beyond that. When the Democratic Party took this over, that part got knocked out mm -hmm. because they can't say that because they're the ones that are perpetrating that. So I think it's, I think people really just need to, if they, if they care, they can, they can keep doing what they're doing if their lives are in a good place where they don't have to be concerned which I really can't understand because nuclear bombs are something that we all may be concerned about. But, um, you know, if you are really concerned and if you have children and grandchildren, you need to look into the Green Party. Mm. You need to, we need to look into doing something different. And I will say again, here in Maine, we're the only state that has ranked choice voting you can, for the first time, for so many people who are not in the Green Party, vote your conscience. Mm. I can't tell you how many people would come up to me and say, I love Jill Stein, I want to vote for Jill Stein, but I don't want Trump. Right. And I'm not going to get into that part because you need to come here and hear Jill explain to you why voting for her does not necessarily mean that we're going to get Trump right and it, it and if we don't start doing things different things will not change mm -hmm. and we are that far away from midnight mm -hmm. that far away from midnight I agree and we need to do something and I also say that even if you are going to vote your fear in the long run Get out, work for Jill, do whatever you can do to give her a chance, mm -hmm. to give this, the people that are literally dying around the world mm -hmm. because of what our government is doing, mm -hmm. to give those people a chance to live too. Mm -hmm. And never mind all the homeless people and everybody here, they're affected because the budget for military is so huge. Mm. And when they come to needing more money, 
they don't tax the rich. If they tax, I saw the figures, something like for each one of these eight or nine billionaires, if they paid their taxes, each one would be like six billion or whatever, whatever, and it would still leave them each with like $360 billion. Right. They don't, it, it is, in other countries, they would come out in the millions into the streets. Mm -hmm. We have been so fortunate in the United States to have been able to live the lives that we have. Mm -hmm. And for, I don't say, <laughs> because you always have to take in consideration when I say that I'm a white woman, mm -hmm. though being a woman is a problem. But, you know, there are a lot of people in this country that have never had it easy. Mm -hmm. But it's time. It's time. I want, I, uh, if anybody sees this, I really, really, really want them to come and hear Jill because it's it's time. Yeah. It's, it's past time. Yeah. Well, you've definitely, definitely illustrated the sense of urgency that we need. Mm. A lot of work to do, and all the more reason for people to go out and get involved. Yes. Mm. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, Jackie. This has been really, really informative for me personally, but also very eye-opening. Well, thank you, Lance. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. So that's it for this edition of PMC Studio. We're proud of our brave studio workshop participants who have been operating the cameras and directing the show with little or no prior experience. If you've seen anything that looked a little off, that's because they are just learning. And so can you. Just visit our website, portlandmedia.org, and choose workshops on the Get Involved drop-down menu at the top of our homepage. Also, if you'd like to appear as a guest on our show, or would like to interview someone on future workshops for the show, please contact Tom Hendel at tomh at portlandmedia.org and let him know. I'd like to thank our guest, Jackie, for joining me, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Until next time.